on to the second game of this league that is being casted, of course, like I mentioned last time. There is already some games being played that aren't being observed and shoutcasted, although we do wish they were. And on top of that, there's some old interesting things that I'm actually discovering about YouTube. And I am investigating methods of trying to get other people to produce content for Nuka TV whilst well, it's being paid, so uh, do check out some news on that in the future. Otherwise, go check out the the forum of the league, which is currently underway between these two mighty fine players, Staker and Thompson Nagan, having a rematch on Bakar. Same factions, same rules as before. So Thompson Nagan is bursting down these roads in a four-man formation. It's gonna be a four-man formation of a blob, though, with the blood flying out of those soldiers because of the grenades and bullets penetrating their insides. Over on the right, Thompson Nagan again doing some more similar stuff. He is losing a lot of soldiers this time compared to the last one where Staker was on the receiving end of brutal force from Germany. So it looks like Staker has a very good chance to get an initial free cap off. He has a single lone soldier on the left, which they did win that engagement against four German soldiers. So, uh, right hand side, I'm seeing some infiltrators, which seems to have gunned down a few guys in the back. Or, more likely, they've moved past the central zone and are sending Thompson Nagan away. There is an AT rifle here, which is an indication to Staker that there is very little bank money. For Thompson Nagan. He's going to have to bring out an assault squad to try and counter this one. Grenades are flying over the top. And what will Staker want to bring out to this? He won't be able to resist the force of all these guys here. But Thompson Nagan, is he going to be reckless to run over into the center? There are a few soldiers here. You shouldn't have to worry about them. But in that time, Staker could have reinforced the line even better and made it very difficult for Thompson Nagan to actually approach there. But that's not what happened. Instead, we're going to run headstrong into these own AT grenade. This is just reversal now. Thompson Nagan uh, damaging a lot of guys, but they could potentially heal up. We just need a few. There we go. Just grenade after grenade of successful smooches. Mm -hmm. Really well-placed grenades there. Ah, oh, you're never going to get better grenades earlier in the game than that. So, Thompson Nagant seizing the right-hand point, but not for long. Moving over into the center as well. These walls aren't exactly the best cover you can obtain. They are kind of slightly too vertical, I would say, for the likes of being considered cover. But Staker is going to continue to fire, kill a few of the guys which ran into open ground. There is that soldier dead on the ground there in the middle of the road. Not, again, fine positioning from some of these soldiers. They could have better places to hide behind. Uh, but at least when they're proning down in the open, they will fire on targets. Not able to avoid yet again another AT grenade. Thompson Negan is more than happy to uh, just, like, lower the weight he has on him by chucking those heavy, heavy grenades. So uh, incoming more infantry play from Staker this time round to counter the more infantry from Thomas and Nagan. And this is why I like 1v1s. They are so more infantry heavy focused. Like you'll see loads and loads of infantry. They are the ones which are really making the decisions in the game. And you can tackle problems with infantry only. And you'll see a lot of creative stuff happen in 1v1s compared to and usually what you'll see in larger games is there is still that creative sort of play out there, but it's more of a troll -a -la lol mode, so like it wouldn't really work necessarily in a 1v1. Uh, it's, it's very silly, very gimmicky sort of stuff you'll see there. So yet again, more grenades going off and Staker threatening a free cap. No points to Thompson Negan at the moment. This is going much worse for him. Although there were some fine grenades, we will mention that. Oh, look, another light AT gun popped down onto the left-hand point. Very similar to the last game for Staker, but uh, Staker doing well yet again. Thompson Nagan needs to seize something. He's bringing in a 2-2-2, two, 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 along with lots of infantry assault squad class. Now, I hope that Thompson will make use of his hero points this time round. There is plenty of hero units he could be using out here just to attempt to win. Uh, I feel, though, like he gave up too soon. Too soon in the last game. Um, he could he could have just, like, maybe even delayed the game somewhat. Uh, you do 
get score based on multiple things. You even get points for playing. Now that light AT gun is kicking in. The 222 is having difficulties passing through one of the buildings. Crew injured. He flops out of the 222. We're going to get a explosion? No, we're not. We're just going to get a whole damage. So that is still repairable for the time being. Uh, perhaps someone will go finish that off. We had a machine gunner just riding by back there. Not always the greatest idea to have the machine gunner leading the charge, but in some situations where there's only a few infantry soldiers, those guys are highly accurate and can kill. But uh, the BAR from the Americans has a lower mag capacity. It always runs out way too fast, I feel. But hey, that's, that's how it goes, so you have to deal with it. It's just nothing will ever beat the MG42 in terms of machine gun firepower, accuracy, and... Brutality, I, I guess. So, situation thus far. Still, Staker in the lead with the two zones on the flanks. But we're seeing a big infantry push. Now, this is going to require a lot of concentration. Many, many micro from Thompson Nagan. He's scattering them up into individual groups now, smaller groups. We have a 30 cal popped on the right hand side. The Staker, he's trying to make a getaway now. We just need one of the bullets to go hit him, but they're all missing. How dare the German soldiers be this freaking incompetent. It's the word I was looking for. Charging down the road. Perhaps, again, not the finest idea that Thompson Nagant has, but uh, we do have to get someone out. Oh, they're, they're not inside the building. They're, in fact, behind the bushes on that side of the map. Seems like some stragglers, though perished because of that individual soldier giving lots of sight to his teammates and firing loads of bullets into the enemies himself so again huge infantry losses for thompson nagan and it's not serving him well as you ought to fought we have a steward out here very very similar build to the one that staker chose last time it's not like a card game where you actually i choose this card but it's working out quite well like the timings it's a timing element very similar to other games out there. Uh, the Marines are also here supporting, pushing up. And really what we want to see opposing these are Brandenburger. That would be equal footing there. And they can also use those Panzerfaust. Gonna use the TNT. We could use the Panzerfaust to just take out infantry. Now, using that TNT on the building there destroys a lot of the windows. Windows are opportunities for machine gunners, essentially. So destroying that is less cover for the machine gunners to actually go obtain. And uh, they can't hide inside the buildings and stuff, even on the lower floors. And on top of that, any debris will kill guys just outside of the building, uh, inside of the building as well. If it comes into contact with them, that 30 cal is healed back up. Staker stroking his infantry, so making sure they good health, yeah. Uh, that was my Croatian, by the way. Absolutely abysmal, but you know, you got to attempt it, keep it fresh. Our AT gun trying to counter an AT gun. It feels though Staker is the one that's got him zeroed in, bringing up a Marine to go fire an AT grenade off, and it explodes again. Not the best decision that Thompson Nagan has ever made, but it is at least a decision. We cannot argue with that logic. Incoming a Greyhound. I feel like we're just on a replay at the moment for Staker just taking like such a good opportunity we just saw a light 80 gun go down perhaps this is going to allow us to have a greyhound move up now there was an 80 rifle back uh, for thompson nagant in the very early stages of the game i wonder if that is still alive and back there or did staker go finish that off as well regardless it shouldn't be too hard just to pop an 80 rifle i believe if you keep an 80 rifle alive during the game Although it is eating up your CP, it should be useful in these 1v1 games. The AT rifle from Germany, not the greatest one, but it's certainly not the worst one either. Uh, it should do pretty well, even against like the, the hardiest of light tanks, we'll call them. P3 back there from Thompson. Uh, again, a great tank to bring out against the Stuart tank and a Greyhound, but we have to be very, very careful. In fact, it's already wiped the floor with the Stuart. It is damaged, so good call for Thompson. Incoming the Greyhound, however, the... Ah, well, we lose two tanks now. Thompson Nagant finishing both the Stuart off and the Greyhound. In fact, this Greyhound, he should be able to go and repair if he desires, if he has a lust to find it in his heart to give mercy upon the Greyhound and go repair it and use it to his army. We have a Crocodile out here. Crocodile versus P3 will not be very good for Thompson Nagan at all. Like, the matchup between there. It is possible for a P3 to take out 
uh, a wide variety of the lesser Shermans, but it's still a hard matchup. The firepower of the crocodile is greater than the firepower produced from the P3, so it's going to have to hide back there until uh, perhaps Thompson Nagant can hold out for a vet tiger. That would be wild, but we have to be careful like not to lose the game before that because it is 45 points to staker right now perhaps we have to be a bit more serious thompson nagant and gamble let's do it let's deal or no deal let's open this box which is the crocodile perhaps we will get lucky and uh hit it right in the noggin perhaps get the track tracking it here would be great and uh, then you could drive around here and hit the engine without the turret actually shooting you although we'll have to move up lots of infantry as well it's quite a distance away to get back behind them but nonetheless thompson nagan is seizing the second zone that he requires but he's gonna have to defend the right one because daker is about to push that with everything here not, not everything he's got. That would be crazy. He would be losing zones there. But everything on the right-hand side of the map is just trying to run it in there. They don't even give a damn about that guy just on the... Like, you there, shine my shoes. What? Blasphemy. Bang, pop in the head. Yeah, that's what you deserve for not cleaning my shoes. 2-2-2 two, two, two over here to defend the situation. Will the crocodile want to look at this? Oh, this is looking tracked to me. No, it's just boxes here. Uh, no, it is tracked right at the back there. So maybe the J does want to move. It is. It's going to take it. Now, this is exactly what I called before. The infantry is moving up. It's providing line of sight for Thompson Nega. So no infantry can go bazooka that Veruca. And the Veruca is in the form of a Panzer Free J. It's going to try and take it out from the front however i see that it could perhaps position itself around here take out a chunk of the building with a he shell beforehand gets that engine shot in i am really pumped to see what thompson naga is just going to continue to do this it's not going to work it's to freaking do it damn it ah! oh god damn it well that's that opportunity out of the freaking bucket uh well uh oh excellent shot from a bazooka right into the side armor uh 222 is going to come around here perhaps the 222 has some trick up its sleeve. Is that the trick up its sleeve? Is that the trick up its sleeve? Things are just exploding for the hell of it now. The uh, game has stalemated. But Thompson Nagan is about to gain control over this assault zone. This could be a mighty fine comeback from him. <gasps> just need to get his grizzly face on. With a deep voice as well, because it sounds cool. Perhaps some of these tanks can be repaired. In fact, this one's looking in better condition than it was before. Uh, that, if repaired... Oh, there's fire! Oh, there's Panzerfaust! There's fire and Panzerfaust and people burning! Engine damaged! Incoming a grenade as well! There was a 50 cal guy on top of the... 50 cal, that's where 50 guys... Ah yeah! That was good looking. You you can't argue that. That was definitely one of the the most excellent croc takedowns of a Nuki TV. Like the building collapsing down on it. I mean, it was already long dead, but it looks so awesome. The building debris falling down on top of it, crushing it, exploding. That was right out of a movie. Very cinematic. Now all the buildings are on fire. I can only assume from a flamethrower out on the field. The M19 is added to stake because like investment into the situation he's got to redeem this he can't lose a 49 to 50 game or out of 50 now thompson nagant is taking up slowly he doesn't have the free cap that staker has had but he's angry he's very very angry now bringing the m19 so close to the front line with all these brandenburger i believe they are no it's paratroopers which are the one just underneath them uh the m19 doesn't quite get a shot on them. We need more line of sight. We need that infantry in the zone. There are machine gunners manning that window. That the M19 is just going to go... Like, I want to see someone rip off the turret of the M19 and start dual-wielding the cannons. That would be like Vulcan out of Metal Gear Solid. But this was... Like, the M19 is pretty much the early versions of Metal Gear Rex. You can't argue that. That is where the turret came from. They just, like, that turret there on the M19, we're going to stick that on the right arm of Metal Gear Ray. Okay, well, fine. And then give it legs and stuff. So, uh, going out of that whole story, Thompson Negan is losing this right-hand zone, and he's going to have to come here very, very quickly to respond to this, and he's going to have to have something to counter the M19, and that unit is a 2-2-3. Again, 
Not the finest choice that Thompson Nagant has, has made. But he does need to get into this zone. He does need it quickly. He does need it urgently. We cannot allow one point to go up for Staker at all. If that happens, it is game over for sure, yo. All right, what we got back there? It's a Stu 42. This could be the tank that Thompson Nagant has waited for. It should be trying to hit this M19. It's highly accurate it does crew injure however the reload time is far greater on the stew the m19 might be able to get out of there its tracks are looking good but unfortunately for staker he doesn't have an eye on the situation he's not retreating this perhaps he feels though is is very confident he just decaps the center and that's it so congratulations staker that was the best out of three but staker wins them both so he wins all the points for the league and now the league champion i believe or he is equal to Thompson Nagant because he's played one game. I don't know. You'll have to check the forums of that one. Games are being played without my consent. Do check in on the forums in the description. Do like, comment, subscribe and all st stuff to support me. And watch out for the future of Anuki TV because it's going to be grande. I'm Anuki. Enjoy the highlights. This was a fun game. Can't argue that. Good night.